Hello, everyone. Here's the question tonight. When you go to see your doctor, you and they, you're expecting to get a diagnosis, right? But is this the best model? Is this system the best way to turn around and end symptoms? Well, I'm going to tell you that by the time that people uh, come, by the time you're watching this, by the people time people come and talk to us, um, I'm going to tell you something that's contrarian out of the mm -hmm. box and may even infuriate some of you and your doctors. I'm going to tell you that in fact, the diagnosis doesn't even matter most of the time. And in fact, could be sometimes completely irrelevant and the wrong way to go. And I am going to show you today how and why I mean this. And here we go. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for another live show. We're back with you live tonight. I'm Anna Manuel alongside Dr. Maggie Yu. And Dr. Maggie, this has been such a hot topic that we're going to delve into all about, do you really need a diagnosis? And I think that um, the I, yes, the question is, do we really need a diagnosis? And the fact of the matter is, the search for the diagnosis is one of the main reasons why doctors are even here. Most of the time, I mean, if you think about doctor training, um, what we're really looking for is we learn as med students, as early young doctors, how do you make a diagnosis? Um, that's a major part of our training. And in fact, the reason we make a diagnosis is really the gateway and the entry with which people can actually get treatment, quote unquote. Mm -hmm. And it's also tied in with the financial model of how we actually uh, are compensated for medical care. Much of insurance really requires a diagnosis in order to qualify you for the treatments that they offer or will pay for. And typically that's limited to medication, further procedures, or further diagnostic testing. And these solutions in themselves, unfortunately, are not the full, complete, or even sometimes the best answer for some of these mystery or complex chronic disease type symptoms. And this is out of the box from what conventional medical doctors will tell you. You know, so often, even the patient also is searching and seeking and wanting that diagnosis and trying to figure out, well, if I could just find out what's wrong with me, then I could get the help I need. Unfortunately, that's just not really how it plays out a majority of the time. Absolutely. I agree with that. And so that's why for me, uh, we asked this week in our Facebook group question of the week. And unfortunately, we are not streaming into the Facebook group right now. So um, if uh, people from our team can uh, go from the page and maybe share it into the group, if you can, we are live everywhere else on YouTube and Facebook, but not live in the group right now. Um, so we did ask the Facebook group this week and we said, what are some of the common symptoms that you have that um, you don't have a diagnosis for it. Therefore, you're not getting help for it. And we had just <laughs> in a matter, a matter yes. of what, 48 hours, we have 200 plus comments here. So much. Um, the, the response was huge. And it just goes to show you how big of an issue this is. So many people are dealing with so many symptoms and wishing and wanting for that diagnosis, but not able to achieve it. Or if they are able to achieve it, they're stuck and not getting anywhere with it. So let's just run down some of the comments that you've seen, Dr. Maggie. Well, I'm looking here and I have somebody who is, uh, we've got, you know, people talking about May M says chronic pain, spasms throughout my body, chronic pain, neuropathy, you name it. Uh, somebody else here is talking about uh, Lisa is talking about fluid retention for years, pitting edema, also GI symptoms like bloating, um, mm -hmm. IBS, uh, Karen C is coming in with neck pain. Carmen's coming with skin flushing on her chest and face. Somebody else is saying rashes. Jamie's coming in with periods related with anxiety. Somebody else is talking about Karen O talking about leg pain. Someone, Laura's talking about joint dislocation. Karen U coming in with hair loss. And then not to even talk about uh, Shauna coming in with classic fibromyalgia. In fact, every single one of my symptoms is based on fibromyalgia. Lynn M is coming in with some kind of autoimmune disorder. I've seen immunologists. I've seen this just, that just. I have this pain, that pain. I have this that won't heal. Tons, right? Katie, Hi. chronic fatigue. Elaine S, never ending fatigue. Um, <laughs> I mean, you name it. Cedar is coming with nerve pinching in the neck, face, tongue, fe face feels swollen. I mean, we've got people coming with mast cell activation disorder, histamine intolerance, tons of food allergic reactions. Someone said celiac, but tons of other food sensitivities. Yeah. I, 
We're getting com we're getting live comments as well, and people are echoing a lot of these same things: allergies of all types, psoriasis, dealing with swollen thyroid and nodules. We're we're seeing a lot of the same types of symptoms, and it, well, it's vast though. People need help with these things, and they're not getting it. Or if they do have diagnoses for them, someone even said, you know, I have these diagnoses. I have fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, chronic migraine, IBS. Doctors know so little about them, and then I have side effects from the medicines they're giving me. Right, exactly. So unfortunately, there are a lot of these diagnoses that are really common. And and people that are dealing with symptoms, it's a lone wolf journey where you're feeling very isolated because you're going up to doctors, begging for testing, hoping to get, quote unquote, this magical diagnosis that then will qualify for you for a magical treatment, whether it's a pill or a procedure to deal with this problem. But most people with these symptoms have more complex causes. Sometimes it's not even one diagnosis. Sometimes it's multiple diagnosis. And sometimes it's actually things like, you know, like you may know it's hormones. I mean, there's tons of symptoms here with hormones, people saying palpitations, insomnia, hot flashes, irritability. Some people have adenomyosis, endometriosis, fertility issues, all down this list right here that I'm seeing. And yes, you even know it's a hormonal problem, but yet that's such a complex quote unquote problem without a diagnosis and mm -hmm. without proper testing and training of medical providers, they don't even know what to do, even though you know it's a hormone problem for sure, right? So even if you know what the diagnosis is, the providers out there aren't adequately trained to diagnose or treat the patterns that are wrong here. Right, right. And then the other problem that you mentioned at the very beginning is that the medical system model is trained that you have to have a diagnosis to even get treatment. So if you're not one of those people who are, let's say, fortunate enough to get the diagnosis, well, now you're stuck in the water and you, you have nowhere to go. You have no treatment options to help. Well, and this is the typical, which is why I'm going to ask you guys right now is if you know somebody that is watching, um, if you know somebody that has any of the symptoms that we talked about, tag their name in the comment section. If you're a member of our team watching, share this into our Facebook group, make sure everybody's watching. Um, I think that lone wolf lack of community or lack of awareness that these common symptoms are really linked with more complex root causes is the main problem. And as people beg providers more and more for solutions, what they find is they get less, your labs are normal. You get sent to this specialist, that specialist, that specialist, they still don't have answers. Your symptoms layer on and get worse and worse. So you feel more and more alone. So today I really wanted to shine a light on it because I really think these hard to treat symptoms uh, or hard to diagnose diagnoses or even untreatable diagnoses like fibromyalgia, mast cell, histamine intolerance, what there's so many, you know, pots, these, these diagnoses really have a common solution and a common, a good way to approach it. That's different than just begging people and specialists for diagnosis. Okay. So what you're saying is no matter what kind of mystery symptom or diagnosis you have that there aren't a lot of great answers for, yeah. there are commonalities of ways to address it. Well, yeah, because every single person that I just read here, they think they're like one of the only people with this. And I can already tell you, our team has probably talked to 30 other people this week with those very same symptoms. And I would say there's three or four people in the program we're currently working with, with that exact same list and set and pattern of symptoms that we're solving the problem for even at this very moment. But yet thousands, hundreds of thousands of people go on and on and on, on this merry-go-round whack-a-mole over hamster wheel over and over again. And I like to look at this and say, how do we stop that diagnosis train and say, how do we really end these chronic symptoms by what I call really a root cause approach, which is the five pillars of transform. I, in fact, just finished um, putting together, um, we have a training called the five pillars of transform. And if you're interested in it, put five pillars in chat right now, and we'll get that to you. And I'm going to tell you guys, anybody who writes five pillars here in chat, in about a week, I have a brand new training that we're just wrapping up. That's just a short 30 minutes of power packed on the five pillars of transform. So anybody that writes five pillars, not only will you access our current um, training in it, but I'm going to give you the 30 minute power packed brand new updated training. I just finished this week. That's so exciting. So if people even have think that they've seen this before, Hey, put it in again, five pillars, because you're going to get the new, the improved, the updated new yeah. information from yeah. your new training.
Well, and here's the thing. We have people, real people, real outcomes, real experiences that I love adding in to show people exactly not only what the system is for finding the root cause, but that this works. And that's why I want to really, I can't wait for you guys to meet Melissa and take it away. Okay. So Melissa is somebody who, you know, you went through a long, long list of symptoms that people are dealing with. Unfortunately for Melissa, boy, did she check a lot of those boxes. I mean, she was dealing with almost too many. It's like you, you almost forget about them. Uh, chief among them, her pain. She was in so much pain. She was dealing with big time weight changes that were mysterious. And one, at one point she lost 30 pounds in a period of just a couple of weeks. Um, she was dealing with several, several diagnoses, but there was just such a laundry list of symptoms. Let's bring her in and say hello to Melissa. Now, Melissa, you graduated the program two years ago. So this yes. is really checking back in with you. This isn't a recent, a recent graduation that you're able to share with us. You're able to tell us how's it going down the road. So why don't you just introduce yourself, Melissa, and give us a little bit of a taste of some of the issues. I mentioned some of them, but really give us a taste of what life was like for you before the program. Yeah, so I, I'm Melissa. I finished the program a little over two years ago, um, almost two and a half years. And before coming to the program, um, life was just not good. I did have a couple of diagnoses, but had a laundry list of other symptoms that were just debilitating and was not getting anywhere as far as the medical care I needed or you know, any help to resolve any of my issues. It's so frustrating. I would think you told me that the doctors were like, oh, you're just getting older or, oh, some of this is in your head, right? right. It's it's aging, aches and pains, um, you know, your, your stress, it's anxiety causing this, you know, pretty much, you know, it's just in your head or, so you know, it's maybe this or it's maybe that, but no definitive, you know, explanation for what was going on. No help. Okay. So let's talk about the specifics. What were the symptoms you were dealing with? The biggest for me was the pain and probably the most dangerous was the weight loss. Um, mm -hmm. I did lose about 30 pounds in approximately three weeks. Gosh, um, the pain was debilitating. It was the pain and the fatigue. I didn't, couldn't function. I, I didn't want to function because I couldn't. Um, now, when you I say had, pain, though, tell me the level of pain that we're talking about. The level of pain was a 10 plus. I 10 mean, plus. I, hurt, oh, in, I hurt in my joints, in my back, in my muscles, cramps everywhere. It was just, it was awful. Unbearable. And the fatigue yeah. was so much so that hard to get out of bed in the morning or what? It was it was hard to get out of bed. It was hard to move. I could walk, you know, from my great room mm -hmm. to my kitchen and back. And I'm exhausted. That was that was my exercise for the day. OK, so and it, then, it, it, was, it was bad. At the same time, digestion was a problem. Digestion was a problem. Um, I had bloating. I had nausea. You know, certain foods I would eat. That, foods that you thought, okay, this is a safe food to eat. You know, this mm -hmm. should be something fairly digestible, fairly easy on your system. And then it wouldn't be. Nope. Um, I had awful insomnia. The insomnia. Oh. And then if you don't sleep, your body doesn't, you know, heal and you, you literally can't function. You're on top of the fatigue you already have. You're tired from lack of sleep. So tell me about your insomnia. Was it such that you couldn't fall asleep? You were waking up a ton, ton of times throughout the night or what was going on? Most of the time I could not even fall into a good sleep. And if I did, it would only last maybe 30 minutes at a time. It's like you fall asleep 30 minutes, you'd wake up. You couldn't go back to sleep for a couple of, it was just, it, it was constant all night long. So frustrating. Okay. I also know you were dealing with hair loss. Yes. I had a lot of hair loss. Um, my hair is naturally curly, but at the time I did the program, I kept it short because it was stripped. Um, yeah. It was straight needle straight and it was breaking off and it was very thin. Uh, hormones. That was a big issue. I know you had a diagnosis related to uh, adenomyosis, correct? And that was causing you um, hormonal. It was a hormonal issue, but also extreme pain from yes. this diagnosis as well. This is a, uh, this is something where, and Dr. Maggie could speak to it uh, mm -hmm. even better, but where you were having endometrial tissue growing into the lining and outside of where it was supposed to grow. It was a very painful condition for you um, as it is for most people who have it. And you weren't getting any help on that front. No, I wasn't. Um, I had a very good um, gynecologist that I saw and, you know, we went back and forth on this for a long time and ultimately he wanted to help me more in a more natural way, but he just, he didn't know how. So I did end up having a partial hysterectomy from that. 
which also led to a spiral of hormone changes. So okay. it was, what was it like? Well, you eliminated some like of the pain. And added, you know, yeah. It just, it added to the problem. Yeah. Well, what was it like? What, what was your mood just completely impacted by this? Well, I was in so much pain from the adenomyosis. And then, you know, once I had the hysterectomy, the partial hysterectomy, the pain was gone from, you know, the problem itself. But then I was dealing with hormonal changes where I was just, I was depressed. Mm -hmm. You know, I felt bad. I was upset that I had to go through that surgery. I mean, it's losing, you know, a big part of me. I, you know, I had three children, so that was a big deal for me. Yeah. But um, it, it was depressing most of all. And to, to know that mm -hmm. it, it didn't really help as much as I had thought it would, it kind of added to some problems. You mentioned depressing, and I just want to hear a little bit more about your, what, what, what was it like to live in your life at the time? I mean, what are you thinking? Are you thinking, oh my goodness, is this going to be the way I live for the rest of my life? And how am I going to do this? I want to hear what were the thoughts, the feelings, and the emotions as you're struggling with this and not really getting any help? At my lowest point, I actually thought that was how I was going to die because I could not get a doctor to tell me what is going on. And I, I knew that there was something wrong, but you know, it kind of falls on deaf ears. So I, I, I just got worse and worse. So I, you know, I, at some point, you know, you just get so low and I, I thought I was receded to it. You know, this is what's, this is how it's going to take me out because I cannot figure out what's going on. Yeah. The anxiety Especially with my weight, with my weight loss, it was in a very dangerous area. So, yeah. you know, something had to give. So I look at Melissa's case and the reason I, I uh, you know, I know Ann um, had interviewed you just a couple weeks ago and Ann immediately called right after the interview and it was Melissa's, what, two to three year update after she finished the program. Um, I think what people don't realize is that Melissa, I mean, you're listing so many, many symptoms and it sounds like it says, I guess, uh, all over the place, unorganized, kind of almost crazy mystery, miracle case, um, mystery case, right? right? And for me, I mean, one of the things when I hear your story is how we hear the story all day long, all week long, and you're not actually the exception. I mean, I think back when you went through the program and every day we look at people in the program, the patterns that you're displaying are really classic. Mm. Many people in the program had these symptoms, had the same journey with doctors, the same diagnostics, the same surgical solutions, the same lack of permanent solutions, and the worsening of their problems. So I want to reiterate and show you guys, not the worst case or the easiest case, but the average case. Um, Melissa, you represent the average case. And I want anybody who's watching right now, if any of what Melissa said resonated with you and you're like, that's me or those, I have those symptoms, type it in chat. Um, and let's share this as a community to realize just how common these problems really are. Right. Because like Julie is saying, she can totally relate. She mm -hmm. felt that like this was how she was going to live or die for the rest of her life as well. I love that. Hey guys, I was Melissa. At the age of 36, Melissa, I was you. And I don't know when you first um, got into social media and saw me and my story. I mean, our stories actually mirror each other quite a bit. Yeah. 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 I got into, I've, I've read your story. So I did the program two years ago. So probably about three years ago mm -hmm. was when I first, you know, discovered your program and your story and who you were and everything. So, yeah. So number one, this is a common pattern. And there's many of you out there with very similar patterns like this. But what I'm going to share with you guys is that even as a doctor, myself, going through a very similar journey as Melissa, I went through the same roadblocks. And the search for diagnosis never ended. And it was year after year after year after year. And even my colleagues were telling me, it's all in your head. Your hormones are fine. They don't need to be tested. Or no, you're not really having allergies to food. No, why would you need those numbers tested for your thyroid? I was met with those resistance, right? But what I see now and I, what I want to share with you, the aha right here, and you might want to grab a paper and take some notes right now, is that when I hear what's going on with Melissa, I see what happened to Maggie. And I am able to take a look and say, well, what's more important than what her diagnosis is, because I can already tell you right now, in my head as a medical doctor, I could already think of 10 diagnoses that she falls under. Mm. None of those diagnoses helped me solve the problem for her permanently. None. <laughs> <laughs> Every single one of those diagnoses allows me to write a script to temporary band-aid a symptom that right. could also cause more problems. I mean, 
Melissa, what did your medicine cabinet look like prior to joining the program? Because I know that's what mine looked like. <laughs> I could have opened my own pharmacy. Right. <laughs> like, what it? I can, let's let's compare. Let's do. Okay, let's I, what I, mean, I had antidepressants. Me too. Uh, mood stabilizers. Me too. I had antibiotics. I had steroids. Me too. Um, you you name it. it. I had it. I had muscle relaxers. Neurotic. Yeah. yeah. I had, yeah. Uh, you know, reflux oh, medication. Oh, yeah. You name it, I had it. Prilosec. <laughs> yes. You know what? That was the regular candy store that I worked from, that I kept prescribing from, that was being prescribed for me. And you know what? None of it worked long term. And in fact, those medicines made me fatter, matter, meaner, sicker. And in the long run, it actually didn't even help my pain. I just had pain build more and more on top of it. I had to fatigue more and more, hair loss more and more, and brain fog and the inability to focus more. I felt like I was demented. Sicker. You were sicker also at the end of it then. You weren't getting well. No. I felt, I felt like they were trying, at some point I was, you know, it gets in your head and you're like, maybe they're right. Maybe it is in my head. You know, you, you go back and forth with these emotions because it's like, you're trying to trust your body and it's telling you something's wrong, but then you have this medical professional and they're telling you, no, nothing is wrong. And yeah, Here, let me give you an antidepressant or something to make you feel better. And it doesn't work. So you, you're like, you're being pulled in two different directions. Absolutely. And so one, so I told you guys to take notes and what I, when I hear Melissa's story, I see clues and I see patterns. I have like, if you think about what our super, like, think about what is your superpower? Like, think about you. What is your superpower? If you have a superpower, write it in chat. I'd love to hear what your superpower is. My superpower power is I see patterns. So I really do. I know how to solve any medical problem like this. I probably, <laughs> ancient Chinese saying, but I probably shouldn't be saying it right I know, now. Say, I know the one you're going to say. <laughs> and it's so funny. <laughs> I'm going to say it. But like, I really do see patterns. And when I hear Melissa's story, and it could be any of your story. I could pull any of you live right out of the audience right now. And I can already tell you how you're going to solve your problem. Because right when I listened to Melissa's story, a couple things really hit me. Uh, one of the things that hit me was she talked about a lot of digestive issues and inability to gain weight. And I don't know how many of you have digestive issues and either you can't lose or you can't gain weight. Immediately in my head, I knew that there was going to be a major digestion issue for her major digestion issue for her. And I can tell you right now, not only as a medical doctor, but as a functional medicine provider, 99% of doctors and even functional natural doctors are not trained to evaluate and look for signs of digestion disorders, which is a root cause of a lot of these issues. First of all, and I'm just thinking about the you know, digestion issues, uh, you know, heartburn, diarrhea, gas, bloating, those kinds of things. But at the same time, uh, downstream, what kind of other symptoms are they causing? Well, it's causing her not to be able to make and break down and process her hormones. There's going to be hormone problems. It can lead to also malabsorption problems that can lead to what? Inability to absorb iron, which can cause what? Hair loss and depression. Right. Exactly. Right. Linking this. And she mentioned that she had problem with dizziness. She has some tinnitus. She has been diagnosed with a vestibular balance disorder. Um, and guess what? People are prone to those when they don't digest and absorb proper minerals like calcium, magnesium and zinc or potassium. So digestion is a root cause. I don't care what other downstream, I do care, but it doesn't matter what downstream diagnosis you have. It comes back to Ding, 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 ding. That's a root cause. Mm -hmm. And Melissa, did you find out during the program that, that was a major root cause for you? Digestion. Oh, yeah, absolutely. The gut, my gut was a, a source of a lot of things. And once I healed my gut and got my digestion, I, I did start to gain weight. Um, I've maintained a weight for two years now. I, I gained every bit of what I lost back plus a little. So, And I've been able to maintain it. Yes. Right. And I want anybody in the audience, if you want more uh, educational resources around digestion, right, digestion, uh, because digestion is linked to mast cell. It's linked to POTS. It's linked to insomnia. It's linked to pain. It's linked to hormones. So if you want some resources around digestion and hormones, digestion and pain, type it in chat. Our team will get it to you. Um, 
So that, that's just one thing. First pattern I saw was digestion, right? And then I start thinking, what's another pattern? Well, she mentioned she had thyroid nodules, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. We didn't yes. talk that much about it, but yeah, tell us you had these nodules pre-existing before joining the program, right? Oh yeah, I've had them for years. Um, the my previous primary care provider, you know, I told her about them and she felt them and she's like, well, we'll ultrasound them. And she did once many years ago and she's like, oh, they're small, you know, they're they're benign, so we don't Problem. need to worry about them anymore. And I, you know, even then I was kind of like, well, Didn't seem I right. you know, wasn't born with them, so they probably shouldn't be there. <laughs> you know? so this is another pillar is hormone balancing for us, which is for me, like, this is a really big pattern that was missed in Melissa and missed in so many of you. I saw in all the comments, how many of you said you had thyroid goiters, nodule cysts, or symptoms of low thyroid, yet you've been told nothing is wrong or your labs are fine or your met your thyroid medication dose is fine. How many of you have been in that group? Type it in chat mm -hmm. because we have a thyroid guide and the thyroid guide has tons of trainings around these missed patterns and opportunities. Uh, providers, medical and functional naturopathic providers just aren't trained on the fact that these abnormal thyroid findings like the goiters, nodules, and cysts is 100% a sign of autoimmune disease of the thyroid. The other, boom, write that down. It's a, that's a big, that's a big thing to take in. And that's what you learned, Melissa, as well. Was that very surprising to you to learn that because you had these nodules, you actually were experiencing an autoimmune attack against your thyroid? I knew they were, I, didn't, I, I didn't know that at the time, you know, I knew it was abnormal for them to be there. But then when I started the training, you started learning everything. I was like, mm -hmm, I knew something was going on. So, yeah, I mean, it was a big eye opener. Huge eye opener. And the first step that people can do is if you want our thyroid guide, write thyroid guide in chat, tell me what's going on with your thyroid. Right. And even if you, especially if you've been told, told your thyroid is fine, uh, you want this thyroid guide, type it in chat right now. But the other thing is thyroid is intimately linked with all the other hormone making organs in your body. So think about it. Thyroid have cells that make hormones. What other parts of your body have cells that make uh, hormones? Your mm -hmm. ovaries, yeah. your adrenals, your brain, your pancreas, which makes insulin to balance blood sugar. So people with thyroid problems, whether they know it or not, there's frequently an autoimmune component, which then leads to what? An autoimmune attack against some of these other hormone making organs. So Melissa didn't just have a thyroid gorder she can ignore or nodule she can ignore. She actually had an autoimmune attack against all her hormone making organs. So I could already tell you if she had come in to see me 10, 15 years before and had been told that she had these thyroid nodules, I'd be like, let's get your hormones checked. Let's check, do your adrenals and all this stuff. Because I wouldn't want to catch Melissa 10 years later, post partial hysterectomy with hormone labs of what, Melissa? What did we find when we finally tested your hormones in the program? Well, I was in um, phase three adrenal fatigue. I was flatlined on all my hormones except for progesterone, which I found out was, you know, because my liver was junked up and it was not helping to train, you know, to change the hormones out. So, so that's the thing. I mean, and, and you know, this, when you went through the program as well, is, is like, it just baffles my mind how opportunities were missed years or decades before. Mm -hmm. When I see the thyroid issue, even it's goiter symptoms or labs that are told normal, I immediately go to, mm -mm, first of all, functional values, functional medicine training. I'm going to let you know those are not normal, number one. Number two, what else is going on with all these other hormone-making organs? Let's test it. Mm -hmm. And once we test it, what are the patterns and then what are the opportunities? Because I'm going to ask you something. You had adenomyosis. You had the hysterectomy uh, because of the pain, bleeding, those kinds of symptoms. Now, I'm sure removing an organ did remove the painful organ that was your uterus, but it didn't change the underlying hormone imbalance that Melissa had or any of the autoimmune issues against hormone making organs that Melissa had. So I'm going to ask you, once you learned about what your hormone pattern was, which was stage three adrenal fatigue and low everything, um, what has happened since you started balancing your hormones? What's improved? Well, um, I do not have thyroid nodules. Um, okay. they're completely gone. <laughs> Stop the presses for a moment. You they're had gone. thyroid nodules before the program. Yes. This is something that doctors tell you are going to be there with you forever. They're just going to maybe stay the same or get worse, but you're telling right. me that they went away. They went away. Um, 
I completed the program and sometime after the program, um, I found a new primary care provider and she's very receptive to the program and the training. I had told her about the thyroid nodules and um, that I checked my own thyroid labs and which she was, she was cool with that. And she said, you know, I would just like to do an ultrasound. Yeah, Let's great. just, you know, let me get a feel for what's going on. And they did the ultrasound and she was like, well, I'm not really sure what thyroid nodules you were talking about because you don't have any. Ah. So, I you was like, <laughs> you I want to say, funny? can I have my doctor badge now? You know? <laughs> well, you want to say funny? This happened to my cat. <laughs> <laughs> my cat was diagnosed with stage two renal failure, told that it was incurable, told I had to buy their special brand of cat food for the rest of his life, which, you know me, I did all my research. I understood it. And I did the opposite of what they told me to do. Six months later, we went back in to do redo his blood test. He had several blood tests diagnosed as stage two renal failure. It's gone. And guess what the doctor said, the vet said to me? Must have been, must have been a wrong lab. Must have been yeah. an error. You mean three times? Ah. Yeah, because that's, that's what you me. hear so often. It's like, oh, that must have been a false positive. Yeah, it, it was worked. a fluke. It can mm -hmm. happen, you know, so, so, no. yeah. No, exactly. Able to turn it around because Dr. Maggie, you've seen this. She, Melissa, while she is a very special person, she's not a special case to you. You yeah. see things like that happen yeah. with people who go through your program. Well, and that's why I'm going to share another resource here. Who wants this gift? Okay, get ready. Because um, what I see is patterns around her symptoms that are related with hormones, whether it's thyroid, ovaries, testicular, adrenal, or pancreas. I see that. And yet your doctors don't, right? So there's a lack of recognition by doctors what symptoms are actually hormone-related symptoms. So I have a hormone checklist. So if you want the hormone checklist to know which and how many of your symptoms are actually linked with a hormone imbalance, type hormone checklist in chat. And I'm really curious, what symptoms do you have that you know is linked to your hormones that nobody else agrees with? Okay. Or nobody else uh, is uh, affirming that for you. I would love to hear it. I would love to see it in chat because I can tell you right now, pinja, pinja, pinja. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Melissa, you mentioned that one major result, then the nodules are gone. I want to hear so importantly about your pain because you had mentioned your pain was a 10 plus. I mean, it, yeah. unbearable really to live and talking to you now, you seem like you're feeling pretty good. So where's the pain level? On bad days, it's a two or a three. The so bad day. So more you're than manageable. <laughs> And on many, many days, if it's not a bad day, if it's a normal day, might you I'm have pain, your pain free? Yeah, I don't really have a whole lot of pain. Boom. <laughs> pain is so misunderstood. And I mean, and I mean, you we've done lives on this. Melissa, you've seen the lives and you've seen other people in the program. I mean, we see people from all walks of life with all different causes of pain. It could be trauma, motor vehicle accident. It could be neuropathy. It could be autoimmune disease. It could be dyslipage. It could be from Crohn's. It could be from, you know, right. anything like even extreme allergies, pots, people with pots. I mean, pain comes in so many flavors and ways. Yeah. And yet we go around trying to diagnose, 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 diagnose. And it, it's interesting. I was just doing a live um, with our alumni, um, asked the experts around pain recently. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about how frequently the kind of diagnosing that doc testing that doctors do with pain frequently misdiagnoses the cause of pain. And so people end up getting like, you know, like they may get a steroid injection. They may even get PRP or even stem cell or a surgical procedure because on the x-ray it shows that there is a lesion. But the problem is that lesion isn't even necessarily responsible for the pain that they have, right? It's another cause, which is why like when we even go backwards and we talk about, right, digestion, huge cause of pain, huge cause of pain. Whoever wants to see the link of that, type it in chat. We have a couple of resources around linking digestion and pain. Hormone imbalances trigger pain like crazy. And one of the major mechanisms I'm going to tell you is that when you sleep is when you heal. When you sleep is also when you make and break down your hormones. Right. Frequently, people with hormone imbalances don't sleep. They can't heal. Mm -hmm. Hormonal imbalances contribute to insomnia, which then contribute to a lack of healing. So that's just one mechanism. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so go ahead, Ann. Well, I was just also thinking, you know, blood sugar balancing and the importance for insomnia and, and, and getting a good night's sleep as well. 
I did a training around insomnia and we talked about how, I mean, I'm just going to ask you guys in the audience. And if you're an alumni and you're watching, type in chat that you're an alumni. But I'm going to do a little quiz here, which is what do you guys out there think is the number one cause of insomnia? And Melissa, did you have insomnia? I, I had it awful. It was awful. Awful because her hormones sucked. I'm just going to let you guys know. But number one cause of insomnia, we just talked about it being like hormonal, one of the major symptoms. But the right. first cause of insomnia is actually, does anyone know what it is? Blood sugar. <laughs> 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 Melissa. And we have alumni jumping with Paula, um, with Nathaniel, with, um, I love it. So it is blood sugar. Blood sugar. So blood sugar mastery is one of the huge causes of every chronic disease symptom. Every symptom we just called out in the beginning here, whether it's mast cell, POTS, insomnia, pain, vertigo, tinnitus, palpitations, number one cause is blood sugar imbalance. Right. We got Bex, Rebecca coming in. Uh -huh. And so I'm going to have another resource here for you guys. Anybody who wants to see my blood sugar stack, I have a blood sugar stack um, handout that I just, you know, did for our insomnia workshop about a month ago. Oh, well, that's a good one. That's the interactive one. Like that one? You, mm -hmm. you, like that interactive. One? you can click on the, the sugar cubes. <laughs> yes. There's sugar cubes and there's resources that you can link on. If you want the sugar stack, um, uh, resource tool we have that actually gives you each tool to actually start balancing your blood sugar to sleep better, put the, sh um, sugar stack right in the chat. And tell me what symptoms you have that you think is linked with blood sugar, because it isn't just insomnia. Her insomnia was linked with her pain. Her insomnia was linked to her depression, anxiety, and desperation. Definitely. You know, the insomnia is also linked with, guess what? Dizziness, fatigue, and nausea in the morning and her weight loss. Mm -hmm. so so Melissa, you learned how to properly manage your blood sugar in the program. And it uh, sounds like that was a major contributor to you starting to feel better. It was, and it's, it was something so simple. And you know, for anybody that's gone through the program, if you can balance your day, if you can balance your fat, fiber, and your protein in the day, you can balance your blood sugar. And it, it every I know so many people think, well, that's a hard thing to do, or you know, it it really isn't it's really not. It really is a very simple process. So it, yeah, the blood sugar, it, it it's like a trickle down effect. If you fix that, then it's gonna fix this and that's gonna help fix this. And it, it is a key factor in, in healing. Boom, all around, right? And okay. And I know, and people are gonna ask about supplements. People always do ask about supplements. Yeah. I'm just gonna let you guys know that there are supplements that can help, right? But you want it to be specifically for your problem, which is why if you really feel like the blood sugar really is like ding, 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 ringing a bell in you. And I'll have my team place a link, but in our store is a link for the blood sugar balancing collection. And I can tell you that there's certain hormone patterns that immediately I look at it. And Melissa's pattern was one of them where I look at it. And I'm like, there's really big blood sugar problems there. And yeah, sometimes supplementation can be helpful. My favorite supplement for dealing for balancing blood sugar is actually um, balancer two in the morning and relaxer one scoop at night. Mm -hmm. But like sometimes we just need some help. So, I mean, I'm just letting you know there are answers in supplementation when you know what the problem is. But the key is you got to know what's causing this problem, right? So I'm on both of those, by the way. <laughs> so I can attest <laughs> that it is very helpful, especially for somebody who has hormonal issues. Maybe you have PCOS or it really any kind of hormonal imbalance uh, can be so helpful in, in helping to manage your blood sugar. But the supplements themselves are a great way to treat as opposed to a pharmaceutical way that's going to cause you more side effects. Yeah. Well, that's the interesting thing. You're mentioning that. And we're, we're talking about medicine cabinet. A lot of times um, the medical community is focusing on high blood sugar, whether you're a diabetic or not. And that's it. But most of the time what we're talking about, Melissa, you and me, we had low blood sugar problems. It's yes. that swing from high to low and low to high. That's the problem. Not just, oh, we're a diabetic or we're pre-diabetic. Right. 99% of people we deal with is not pre-diabetic or diabetic. And their problems is that they have really big blood sugar swings throughout the day. Right. And yet, let's say you qualify for a diagnosis of blood sugar problem. Uh, they're going to, they're going to, let's say, prescribe you metformin, a medication which helps lower blood sugar, which can make people sometimes like people like me and Melissa, even worse when we hit our low blood sugar swings, our tinnitus, our vertigo, our dizziness, our POTS, our allergies, our mood or anxiety or palpitations or insomnia, worse. Yeah, yeah. And, and yeah. you know, not, not only with the blood sugar, you know, you talk about pain, 
steroids are one of the biggest things given to people for the pain and the inflammation, but steroids themselves are hormone disruptors. So if you have pain due to hormonal issues and then you're being given a steroid for, you know, your issues and it's disrupting your hormones even further, you're actually making your symptoms worse. She's so smart. Dr. Maggie, look what you've created. <laughs> And then Renee's jumping in too. Renee recently, um, she said, I never connected blood sugar or hormones to insomnia until starting the program. I look forward to bedtime now. How many of you guys would like to look forward to bedtime? Because that's a time when you're going to make and break down and process hormones. That's going to be a time when you actually heal your body. That's the time when you actually dream. When was the last time you dreamed? Yeah. Like for reals. Last night. I mean, I <laughs> you didn't <laughs> know. <laughs> That's what we love to hear it. <laughs> we That's love to funny. hear it. And then Dr. Maggie, if you're up for answering just a quick question, because some people, maybe they're caretakers or maybe they have insomnia, like uh, so many people out there, including Melissa, this person wanted to know, you know, I'm a caretaker, yeah. so I only sleep in a couple hour increments. Yeah. If I'm not getting that continuous sleep, what's going on? Is it, can I ever really get to the point where I'm healing? And, and well, you know, you have people who have to wake up multiple times a night, whether they're night shift workers, caretakers, or whether they're breastfeeding a child, right? Those are some life things that happen that will interrupt sleep, right? But at the same time, the quality of the sleep that you do get during the times when you do sleep at night is really critical, mm -hmm. right? Even if they're in shorter bursts, yeah. are they are they still quality? How many of you guys are actually sleeping but waking up tired even though you sleep six hours or eight hours, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, to me, it still goes back to what is affecting the quality of your sleep is your blood sugar, yeah. your digestion, your hormone balance, and last but not least, your food allergies, your food mapping. I'm dying to hear from Melissa about this one because what was going on with you? What did you discover through going through the program and learning about your food mapping results? It was the biggest aha moment. So <laughs> I did my food mapping and, you know, before I did the program, I, I eliminated so many foods of my own because, you know, just in my own reading and research, like this is this can't be good. This can't be good. Two of the foods that I consumed every single morning, they turned out to be my two biggest allergens. No. <laughs> no. So, what was uh, it? Cinnamon and bananas. And Who I knew? would it's so healthy. Healthy. My, my three cinnamon bananas in a milkshake. So I cannot have any dairy whatsoever. Bananas <laughs> and cinnamon are off limits and every morning I'm consuming all three of these. So it's just like a big shake of here. Let's feel worse, you know? <laughs> oh my and so oh we lost the we lost the camera. Well, <laughs> but here's the piece. I mean most people don't realize that these symptoms are related with an allergic reaction to foods that are healthy. Yeah. Right. So and they it, it doesn't you know just because it's healthy doesn't mean it's healthy for you. I didn't know that until I did the program, you know, you assume, well, this is a fruit. It's, it's a good food. It has no nutrients, but your body might be saying, yeah, but it's not good for us, you know? So I'm but curious, like, once you removed them then, how quickly did you notice a change? Just within a couple of days. Yeah. Just, <laughs> just within a couple of days, because for one, I cannot di digest dairy. I'll never have dairy again. And I was taking it in every uh -huh. morning. So immediately after, you know, I would drink this, I'm feeling like, crap, you know, it's awful. That's, and, that, so and that's food that's mapping was a, a huge aha. Uh -huh. So here's a couple of things about food mapping. All right. And I'm just going to clarify it. And, and those of you who want to learn about food mapping, type food mapping in chat, because food mapping is not anything anybody else does. No. I created it. Okay. Um, a couple of things. Nobody would think looking at Melissa's symptoms or yours um, that who knew her adenomyosis, her insomnia, her hair loss, her weight loss, um, her pain, let's say, was related to, or her uh, tinnitus or dizziness was related to what? A reaction to allergies to really healthy food that she's eating. That's never going to be diagnosed. I'm just letting you guys know, never going to be diagnosed in, or thought about in a conventional medical clinic. And here's the problem. You go to a naturopath or a functional medicine clinic and you say, give me some food sensitivity testing. And I'm going to tell you, 99% of you still in that setting aren't going to get it accurately diagnosed. And I think the reason that I had to create food mapping, and I don't know if you experienced this, M Melissa, but many, I mean, alumni, I'd love for you to jump in. 
but how many of you guys have actually worked with naturopaths or a functional medicine practice that promised you food freedom with their food mapping or not food mapping, with their food sensitivity testing only to find out the results were not accurate? meaning that you removed them at great pains. There were so many things removed and yet no difference. And then you reintroduced it yet. No difference, meaning inaccurate results. I would love to know how many people have had that experience, which is why I'm telling you right now, just, I agree with many conventional doctors um, that a lot of food sensitivity testing is shitty. And that is the truth, but there's a key point I want to point out. And this is where you want to get out the pen and paper, everybody. Okay. In the population that has a lot of chronic health symptoms, we react to a lot of foods, okay? We are actually hyper-reacted to a lot of foods, and our immune systems can have a lot of what we call false positive and false negative. So what that means is, even if you did the best tests on the planet, the test will come out with some numbers that are falsely real and falsely negative. Okay, then you're like, well, then how's that going to help me? This is where food mapping and I come in. I actually teach medical providers and people in our program what's a false positive, what's a false negative. If you remove that noise, you get real accurate results. They don't teach this to functional and naturopathic doctors. In fact, even the tests that we use, the doctors that work for that company to actually teach providers on how to understand their test results don't understand this false positive, false negative phenomena. I'm the only one that's really teaching this. And so I do want to ask people who are in the audience who've had food mapping in our programs program with us is that have they had that experience where they spent a lot of money or not a lot of money or worked with other naturopathic functional doctors to do food sensitivity testing only to get inaccurate results, right? Or not the results that they needed. This is why food mapping is completely different. It's the opposite of an elimination diet because we are using data to know what to remove and what to reintroduce. But number two, we eliminate this whole thing with false positive negatives to get absolutely clinically accurate results um, that for Melissa, within a couple of days, she's feeling better. And I'm going to ask you if this is real or not. When you reintroduce dairy, when you actually get cinnamon in or banana in, what the hell happens? Tell me the proof. <laughs> oh, it, it goes crazy. It's stomach cramps, um, inflammation out the wazoo, and which it, I do get pain. Uh, I, I avoid dairy like the plague. If I accidentally ingest it, I mean, I know what's going to happen, and it, it's it's awful. It, it just, it can't happen. Food, that food mapping was spot on with those things. And that's the thing. That's why I, I created the phrase and the term and the process for it, because I'm so, I, it honestly makes me angry, kind of the what people are calling food sensitivity testing, what people, um, and, and it's not even the price you pay. There's really inexpensive mail order tests and the most common tests ran in functional and natural path clinics are, is over a thousand dollars. And yet it is one of the most inaccurate. That's the reality of where the current state of care is, whether it's functional medicine or whether it's conventional medicine, conventional medicine just says it's all fake. And then we are really challenged with all these tests that don't accurately reflect what's really happening. So food mapping is a very accurate way of doing this. And it's another pattern that's really missed because reactions to food, when your gut is fighting a food, guess what's this happening? When your gut sees a food, in Melissa's case, banana and cinnamon, that she was drinking a milkshake every day, her gut was saying, enemy, 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 I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you. And I'm going to fight with you. That actually activates all of these, what we call pro-inflammatory pathways, which activates what we call inflammatory cytokinins that causes activation of hormone problems, um, uh, things that go into the brain and affect mood and energy in her brain cells and in the rest of her body. It can trigger pain. The other pathway it activates is the histamine pathway, histamine pathway. And so many of you guys don't even realize that the histamine pathway isn't just linked to allergies, but it's linked to pain. It's also linked to pro being pro-cancer. How many are you struggling with cancer, pre-cancer, or have had a history of cancer and don't realize, oh, wow, food allergies and the histamine pathway have something to do with this? Absolutely, it does. And it's a hidden pattern nobody is seeing. Well, I, I've never heard you talk about that before. So to me, that's a light bulb moment to hear, you know, anybody struggling or, or getting precancerous results, even that this mm -hmm. is connected to that because so many right. of us, you know, are in kind of a watching, a watch zone when it comes to some of the, the cancer. So fascinating, Dr. Maggie. And, and you just, I've never heard this anywhere else. That actually just, it was kind of an aha moment that you mentioned that too, because I had had a breast biopsy and I had, it was benign, but I had cell changes. 
Yeah. So it was considered, you know, precancer. So yeah, I have a pathway in Melissa food, food, food allergies. Yeah. I mean, this is, this is the link. Nobody, I mean, and this is scientific fact. I'm not making this up. If you actually look at the medical liter literature, if you look at understanding the biochemistry of the histamine pathway, you even see diagrams of all the things that histamine does. It's not just allergies, people. The histamine pathway is directly linked with a increased histamine, increased pro-cancer risk and cancer pathways. Boom. Nobody's talking about this. Mm -hmm. they're, 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 the research is there, but we're, I'm not I'm not hearing that from my doctor. I've never, ever heard that before. So well, thank you so I much. I see patterns. Like, I see patterns. You see patterns. So people, it's I see dead people. Uh, she sees I patterns. See patterns. <laughs> I see thriving, living, passionate, living <laughs> life people that kick ass, take names and do bubble gum. <laughs> <laughs> we love to hear it. We love to hear because okay, Melissa. Something else I'm curious about. You mentioned fatigue was so major for you. How does that stand now? I may get tired like everybody else. I chase a four year old grandson all day, but I have the energy to do it. So you know, could you have ever done that before? Probably. Would you? Would your family have even given that responsibility to you to say no? Never. No. no. Okay. It was like you know. It was more like from my kids, you know, mom, do you, you think you can get up and like fix yourself up today? You know, do you want to go out to dinner? Because you know, before I'd be like, no, you know, you all go and I'll stay home. But now it's like, mm -hmm. I don't want to cook. Take me out to dinner. So. <laughs> and you're chasing. And I know what it's like to watch a four-year-old because we share this in common. I have a four-year-old son. You have a four-year-old grandson, right? It's a grandson. Right. Yes. And that's a lot of energy you need. And I'm done with four-year-olds. Yeah. She <laughs> yeah. is like happily an empty nester, right? So she's, <laughs> but oh my gosh, it takes a lot of energy. You have to, yeah. you have to be able to constantly be on the go. And so you're yes, like, I get up in the morning and take my supplements. Like we're going to make it through this day. We're going to make it through this day. <laughs> I love to hear it. And your itchiness, your itchiness, where does that stand? Yeah, the itchiness went away. Uh, that was, mm -hmm. I think, that was in large part dehydration. I was mm -hmm. severely dehydrated, and the itchiness with, with along with the collagen and the hydration, the itchiness has gone away. Okay, okay, she's linking like four concepts. She now see patterns, people. I'm going to tell you how super smart Melissa just said what she said was, and I'll tie it together. I'll make, I'll tell you what the super pattern she just said was. Um, she mentioned itching, hives, rashes, and a lot of you guys with mast cell, histamine intolerance, food reactions, allergies, hives, you name it. Okay. Listen up. She linked up that when she, and hydration is huge, pro calculate the proper amount of water that you need for adequate cell function and to lower histamine load. Ding, 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 ding. Hydration is dilution. Dilution lowers histamine load. Pattern number one. Ooh. <laughs> Pattern number two. Hydration is digestion. When you hydrate, you're actually helping your digestive process break down food into smaller and smaller and smaller molecules, right. adding in the H2O water molecule to dilute and break down more. Hydration is digestion. <laughs> and then wait, but wait, there's more. <laughs> You're so smart, lady. All right. She said pro collagen WB, adding collagen to water, adding more collagen. Like, how is she going to tie collagen in with all this other stuff? Well, when you have medical grade collagen, really easily single ingredient protein, it's really great for people with a lot of allergies, right? You got a lot of allergies, you can't get weight, you can't get the adequate protein in, single clean protein source, right? multiple grades, different kinds of call, different types of collagen in one product, right? Hi, here's the thing about collagen. It is extremely absorbable, even for people with digestive problems. Yep. It's so absorbable as a protein. So it's not just like, oh, I'm working on hydration with this hydration, but I'm putting in a really easily digestible, absorbable protein mm, that then goes in really easily broken down passes the gut blood barrier, you get a steady state of protein, which guess what? Balances your blood sugar. It's wild. It's just, it's just crazy to me to think about all of the concepts that Melissa has been able to apply to her life, Dr. Maggie, that you have taught in your program and that you're sharing with us so, so much fun. <laughs> yeah. Because what I'm hearing from you, Melissa, is the pain is gone. The fatigue mm -hmm is so much better. Your hair looks beautiful. Exactly. I know. <laughs> uh, the itching is gone. Um, you know, 
all of the problems that you had, the nodules disappeared. No <laughs> nodules. That's no more precancerous, everybody. Yeah. I mean, I word nodules are precancerous, period. They're not Melissa, to be ignored. Melissa, how do you rate the level of where your life is now and, and, the, and the happiness and the quality of your life? I have uh, two a years life. Out of the program. You know, I have a life now. So, you know, you don't have life laying in the bed. So, yeah, I mean, I have a life now. I love it. It's great. So this all comes back to, I mean, I'm curious, Melissa, how, how long were you on the diagnosis rigmarole before I actually joined the program three years ago? Um, probably I was a good three years in, into it before I, I saw the program. Yeah. So, and that's not the amount of time she even had the symptoms. I mean, if you go, no, I had the symptoms probably about 10 years prior, they started um, right oh, after goodness. my last child. So, okay. it's part of hormone changes triggered this. Okay. Ding, ding. Everybody know the pattern. So, we, didn't get, we didn't even get into the financial aspect of it, Dr. Maggie, which I know right. from uh, having interviewed Melissa. Not only was it getting very expensive to visit many doctors, but tell us what you had to do when it came to work. I ended up having to quit my job. I could I couldn't function. So you know, it just I couldn't hardly get myself out of bed to go to work. Mm -hmm. There'd be many days I would call out or I'd have to stay home. I mean, I I, I couldn't do it. I I couldn't. I didn't have the brain capacity to do it. You know, at that time. That means thirteen years of underwork. Yeah. Right. And then where you are with 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 work now? Well, I I'm fortunate enough that I don't have to work, so I choose Good. not to. Um, I stay you home. Work, and, you need to go back if you wanted to. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. You have choice now. Yeah, I have choice. I can, I can, I can do what I want because I, I, I feel like I can do what I want. So, and maybe this program opened your eyes up in some ways too. And and since you are fortunate to be able to not work, maybe you're living your life a little bit differently, and you're pro placing priorities on things a little bit differently. It sounds like mm -hmm. very much so. You put a lot of things in perspective. Um, and I'm also helping others around me live a little better. Like everything I've learned in the program, um, mm -hmm. I've applied to, to my husband and to my daughter. Um, my husband has lost 57 pounds. Wait, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> you mentioned this. Yes. So he's he's doing um, great. But he it's kind of funny because he's like something bothers and he's like, Okay, doctor, wife, I'm having an issue here. Um, you know, we draw. I draw my own labs, like we we're taught to in the program. Check them every three months. So he started having some issues. So I was like, well, here, let me draw your labs too. So I looked at his labs and I was like, mm, you got a problem. So we're gonna fix it. Love it. Love it. So that really ties back to is that so many of you have these difficult to treat symptoms. I hope that we've been able to show you just what the underlying patterns that's missing. A root cause approach is the only way and is the best way to actually end these chronic symptoms that are difficult to diagnose. So I think Melissa is a great case to show that when is it time for you to jump off the diagnosis train? Yeah. And the sooner you do it, the better, because this is 13 right. years for her. And for me, it was, you know, many years as well. It was like 10 years before I was really able to start learning how to help myself because there was nobody out there at the time to be able to help me. So if you're, if, if you've learned anything here, if there's anyone that you know um, that could benefit from watching this video, put their name in the chat right now, tag them because sharing is caring. If you want to get any of the resources that we talked about, um, there are members of our team that are in chat right now, go ahead and just send them a message. Uh, private message, a, a member of my team. They've been posting links throughout this uh, live. Um, we have the sugar stack, sugar balancing stack. That is a resource. If you want it, uh, message them. We have a thyroid guide that we discussed. We had a pain protocol. There's also tons of trainings around digestion and pain, digestion and hormone balance. We talked a ton about hormones and pain. When we shared the hormone checklist. So if you want the hormone checklist, there's a link to, to get it, but you can also message a member of our team to get the hormone checklist. And then most importantly, if you want to work with us, we're going to post a link here for you to book a call with our team um, to really address all these root causes. When are we going to get off the diagnostic train? When are we going to stop playing whack a mole? When are we going to break that pattern by identifying and treating the causes and these obvious patterns that now you're starting to see? Yeah. Melissa, do you want to say anything else about your journey as a whole? Now, it's it's definitely been that it's definitely been a journey but you know as you said i mean the program it, 
you know, if, if anybody's doubting the validity of it, it, you know, it absolutely, it works. Mm -hmm. It works. So, you know, for anybody that is going down that rabbit hole with no hope, there, there is hope, there is hope and there is help, you know, and knowledge is power. Yeah. Yeah. Well, congratulations. I'm so happy for you that you are feeling like, I would say a new woman, but it sounds like better even than your <laughs> before. Hell yeah. <laughs> Very much. Mm. Thank you. Uh, up, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us and feel free to message a member of our team and sharing is caring. Tag someone you know. Thanks, everybody.